in this video, learn how to use the past price action in a stock for future trading gains. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading class at One Good Trade and the playbook. In this video, a new trader demonstrates how to use a key trading level from a prior day after an important news catalyst hit the market to profit in Netflix. Let's get to work on sharing this recurring technical analysis trade so you can add it to your trading playbook. Uh, my name is Dan, and I'm going to be uh, presenting my breaking news failure trend continuation play for Netflix. Dan, context. Where are you in terms of how long you've been trading and your status right now here? So currently I'm a junior intern here with uh, SMB and I've been trading for about two years uh, on my own account and started watching the markets I would say my sophomore year of high school and here I am at SMB. Okay, good. All right, just uh, for a bigger picture, uh, kind of look at it. The S&P was now coming into its fourth red day off the highs and the same thing for the Qs coming into its third red day. Uh, so this is kind of a little bit of a change in character for us as this is the first time that we were not aggressively bought back up. Um, for weeks prior, when we've gapped down, we have seen uh, immediate bought back up in the, in, the, uh, in the open. So now this is kind of a little bit of change of a fundamental, uh, changing character for the indexes. And this is adding to my short bias for Netflix. So for a bigger picture, the SP was coming into its fourth red day of off its highs, and the Qs were coming into their third red day. Uh, this was a little bit of a change uh, for the prior couple weeks where we were gapping down and we were aggressively bought back up, but this time we were not. So this is kind of adding to my short bias for Netflix. So here's some kind of bigger picture charts for the indexes. So this was a multi-day event that I've been adding to my playbook. Um, this is something I've been developing over the summer and something I've been working on uh, creating and getting better with. So the first day of this trade is the front side. It's the breaking news uh, that pushes the stock drastically in either direction. Day two is now the back side where we see that classic sell the news and we consolidate into the end of day. And then day three is where I put on the trade, where it's the failure to reclaim its previous breakout points, and we lead to a continuation to the downside. Do you take all of those trades, or do you take only a few of them? Yes, yeah, so the first day and the second day, this is what I'm scanning for. On the third day is when I put on the trade. Okay, so we're D3. So this is D3, yeah. So uh, one thing I do want to point out is that Netflix does have a high institutional ownership. So one thing that I've developed with my style for the past uh, three months or so is trading most of the high beta name sort of companies and getting to understand what type of levels they trade off of, what type of areas they trade off of, and uh, developing a playbook based around those type of stocks. Um, so one thing to point out with the institutional ownership is a lot of the stocks that I trade have high uh, I.O. So now this is event one with our breaking news. So Netflix came out after hours, uh, announcing that they're going to be pushing into the video game space, pushing beyond their films and TV. Uh, they also announced that they're going to be hiring a former Facebook executive that specialized in games on the Oculus reality, virtual reality headset. And after hours, this pushed uh, Netflix higher from 547 to 566. Does anyone actually, is that popular, the Oculus game reality? Yeah, it's picking up. I've never used one. It's uh, pretty wild. If you get a chance to put one on, I highly recommend it. OK. Um, so this was the uh, first day move. Um, as you can see here, we had a uh, little bit of consolidation for the, pre the week prior. And on that day prior to the, on the open, prior to the after hours announcement, we had a little bit of a breakout over that 545 level. Um, so this is also a psychological uh, number. Uh, it's an increment of five. Um, so based around those numbers is another thing I want to add. But we gapped up in the after hours uh, on that news. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead 
and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So now we put in that backside, uh, the sell the news. So right in the open, we flushed to the prior day's close and faded the rest of the day. This closed below that 545 uh, inflection level and we put in over four hours of consolidation into the close. Okay, I'm a little confused. So what do you mean by backside sell the news? So on the open, we immediately flush and had a little bit of a price discovery. And then by 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock, we started to really uh, sell off and close uh, under that 545 uh, level. But this is day two. This is day two. Okay, let's use the same language. So when we say sell the news, what that means in trading parlance is we are expecting an event to hit, a news catalyst to hit for a particular stock. There's going to be some announcement that we're, we're waiting for, and uh, then it actually comes, and it's good or bad, or, but, but there's an announcement. And then after that announcement, uh, the this, this stock sells off. So I'm trying to think of something where we just had that. Um, AMC. So people are waiting for AMC earnings. And uh, before that, the stock was traded up a little bit. The earnings came out, they were good. And then after the earnings came out, they sort of sold the news. That's not the best example. I've got to think of a better example. But the idea generally is something trades up. I'll, I'll do it the easiest way. Something trades up and then the street's even expecting good news and the news comes out and it is in fact good. And then after that, right away, right away, day one, there's, there's a there's sell the news event. So it's kind of like buy the rumor, sell the news, mm -hmm. but it's right away. So um, whereas backside, First of all, backside usually doesn't come in day two. It usually comes after multiple days of something trading higher than you would think. The easiest way to sort of measure that would be to look at your Bollinger Bands and to see that the stock is trading really far extended from its, its normal Bollinger Bands. And so you're, you're just seeing technically this, this is not sustainable by price. And that happens for multiple days and happens for longer than you think. And then, so the stock's just overbought. It's just the stock's overbought not sustainable at these prices. And then it shows you the backside based on price. There's a deep red candle to the downside. And then we trade off of that because now we're getting that signal that this is gonna, at a minimum, revert to the mean, at a maximum, go back to where it came from. I don't really think this is a sell the news event. And I'm not sure this is a, I'm not sure this is backside yet. Backside indicates this, something's just up too much. It has, has to be up some, and, and why that's important is this might be just a reversion to the mean trade, or this might be just a fade trade, and those are hand, a fade trade is handled differently than a backside trade. Um, a sell the news trade is handled differently than this example. So anyway, let's, let's work through it, and let's, okay. let's see if we can get some better terminology here. Um, but yeah, this was the second day after So it's the, the second day happened. after a news catalyst. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now for day three, uh, this is when I put on the trade. Uh, on open, Netflix was immediately bid up to its pre-market highs. So day two, it sold off. Yep. Day one, it ran up a lot. Yep. Day two, it sold off. And now this is day three. Yeah. Okay. So we were immediately on the open bid up to its pre-market highs. And we started to wick above VWAP, spending a little bit of time uh, doing some price discovery. Uh, and that pre-market high was 61 cents away from that key inflection level, that 545. Um, so after that, we fell below VWAP and started to sell. So now sellers were now clearly in control as many buyers who bought the day one breakout were also underwater. Any longs that were also trapped in the consolidation from the previous day were also underwater. Uh, All right, read that to me again. So the sellers were clearly in control as many buyers who bought the first day were now clearly underwater, and also any longs who were trapped in the consolidation from the day prior. How was the volume on day one? Was uh, there elevated volume on day one? 
on, on after hours, yeah. So this is just my execution command and the way I kind of played it out. So I waited for the stock to come up to the previous resistance level, that 545. I looked for failure on the tape along for the chart to hold below that breakout level. Um, and I shorted any pops into the open. Now, since Netflix is a market stock, I was also paying attention to Qs and SPY along with ADD and TIC. Uh, and then to good. cover. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, to cover, I was looking for that 200 SMA on the hourly. Okay. So you're looking for, so you're using a level from day two as resistance mm -hmm. to trade into the 200 day moving average. Yeah. So it's a reversion. That's a fade trade. It's a fade trade. It's a mm -hmm. reversion to the mean trade. Yeah. Yeah, I, this is a second day trade, and there's a subset of second day trades which are on the third day to make, <laughs> to make your life more complicated. So that's what this is. So there's, uh, there was a big event, and from that big event, we got movement, and we got prices, and then on the second day, it acted very differently, and we've got prices that are important from that second day, and we're now taking advantage of something moving to a second day resistance level that it shouldn't to on day three. It just, it just, why would it go up there? It already failed from there. Like, what are you dopes doing? Like, it failed from there. What were you watching? You know, like, what are you smoking? Like, this should not be up here. Like, what are you doing? It goes up there on low volume. These people have no idea what they're doing. You're a professional trader. You know that's a big resistance area, that you know that's a big resistance level, and you know, it, it already failed, it lost from that level, the buyers lost from that level, and it's just a good risk reward short. And I'm, I'm using that, that those prices, those levels, from right after a catalyst to, to gain an edge. Totally a great trade, uh, totally a very good trade, not a great trade, totally a very good trade. That is, a, I like what you're thinking. This is a trade, using a resistance level from day two, I like that you are coming up with a re reasonable, a, a realistic uh, level for what it can, it can pull into. Um, but it is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a day two trade, subset day three. Um, and, and those, you'll, you'll, you'll develop that. I was actually, I had, a, had lunch recently with some traders and they were yapping about their favorite trade, they're killing it their younger traders who are super happy with the firm, with me, with all the traders, with their life, with every, they're killing it. They're doing great. Couldn't be happier for them. And they were yapping about how they don't understand how more traders at the firm don't make the second day trade. Um, and we teach the second day trade pretty early on. It's one, of, it's one of the trades I actually consider to be one of the easiest to learn. Spencer's favorite trade, if not, I think it's his favorite trade. If, if not, it's one of his top two trades. I oftentimes say it's one of the top two easiest trades to learn from. So uh, a trend trend trade is a super changing fundamentals trend trend trade, super easy trade. Like for people to start using that. Second day trade, probably number two on my list for top two easiest trades to make. And, and so you're doing that. So you're, you're, you're in the right, you're in the right uh, stock. You're, you're in the right setup, you're, you're trading it nicely, we consider it a second day trade. Um, but look, and I, I want to say something about that, which is, and I appreciate you actually presenting here today because, you know, the whole pro, we, we'll, we have people who will do reviews like this, some of them are super advanced and some of them are just learning, and it's good to see people along the spectrum. You know, at this point in your career, you're not supposed to be making trades the way guys who make seven figures in the desk do, or even guys who are mid six figure year traders, or even consistently profit traders. That's like not what we're doing here right now. That is not what we're doing in the junior internship program. That's not what we're doing. We're not trying to make money. We're just, we have no, it's not realistic to think we should be putting trades together like senior guys. What you should be doing is trying different things and learning how to think through a trade the right way, playbooking them, and starting to get a sense for what types of trades you like more than others, what types of trades you like less than others, and, and start to position yourself towards the type of trading you want to do more of. It's kind of like you're trying out for a baseball team and you're trying the different positions and you're trying to figure out are you a shortstop or are you a center fielder or are you a left fielder, you know, you're trying, 
it's, that's, that's what you kind of want to walk away from. You want to be like, I think I want to play shortstop. You know, or, no, I think I want to be a catcher. That, 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 that's, a, that's, that's important. And there are stages to all of this, and it, it takes time. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, you're doing fine. Let's, let's keep going. You're, do, you're doing fine. This is, this is where you should be at, if not better, for where you're at in your career. Yeah, the, um, for the majority of the summer, I've been kind of spending uh, time figuring out the style that I like and what fits my personality and what fits what I like. Good. But, so now this is that day three where we fail to claim that inflection level of 545. Um, so right in the open, you can see we immediately are, are uh, bid up right to the previous uh, breakout level of that 545, uh, right along that consolidation. We pop right into it. And then from there, we hop a little VWAP again and immediately so, start to sell off. Yeah, so you ever hear of the term anchored VWAP? Yeah. Okay. So one thing I'd play around with with this as well is, is start to draw anchored VWAP from when the catalyst came out. So that's day one. So the news comes out, that's day one. And then let's draw, let's draw VWAP from that day to time present and see where that is. That will, particularly if it's something that failed, that'll give you some good levels as well, the trade off of. So if something was well below VWAP uh, from, or anchored VWAP, and then it, sp it sprouted up towards that area, you can probably make that into a pretty good resistance trade as well. Uh, so as you can get that on the five minute, we popped into the uh, 545 bit up, and then as soon as the tape reversed, I was looking to get short. Uh, and then I was watching ADD and Tick to see when they were going to reverse. Uh, this good. is something I've been uh, developing into good. a lot of my trades. Good, 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 good. It's uh, drastically helped me um, good, good, with good, 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 good. my trading. So I see some of my potential reasons to sell. So for this trade, I was risking the top of that 545 level, uh, the top of prior day's consolidation. Uh, next, I was looking for some clear direction change in the tape. So, if, you know, a lot of buyers stepped up on the bid and were kept in pushing, pushing higher. That's when something I looked to get out. Uh, spying cues reversing to the upside, opposed to continuing to the downside, because uh, this could push Netflix as it is a market stock, along with tick and ADD. Uh, so it's just my trade review uh, executions. Good. So I was clearly watching for that reversal in ADD and tick. Um, one thing I was watching for is at that 10 a.m. kind of level. Um, Netflix started to pop, but I kept looking at ADD and tick, and we were still seeing down ticks and ADD uh, ticking down. So it led me to stay in the trade and not cut my winners too early, because uh, that's something I've been working on, is where I allow my winners to continue instead of cutting them too short. So this is just a little bit of overview. Um, I learned a lot from this trade, and I learned how pattern recognition can help me find my setups and execute a plan based on my uh, based upon the past events. I also sharpened my skills for reading uh, ADD and tick uh, to catch the reversal in the market. Uh, I pretty much caught the top and the bottom of this, um, but one thing I do want to do better in this is uh, start slowly taking off risk into lows, opposed to just selling all my position at the market reversal. Uh, and then if I could take this again, uh, I would look to add at the pops into VWAP and scale out into the close, uh, opposed to just the trade in the open. Just a uh, slide of how I could have done this better. So sh uh, short the pops in the open, cover at the bottom, and then reshort into VWAP and look into cover into okay, the close. Okay, now you're going to get a huge applause from me here. Okay, this is terrific right here. Mm -hmm. This is exceptionally good. And I was talking to a trader, one of the traders on the desk who's doing pretty nicely, consistently profitable trader. Um, third year coming into his own, did better this year than last year, did pretty well last year. You know, uh, mid six figure guy. I want to make more, Bella. Chats me up. I want to work on my sizing. And so we start to explore some ideas as to what he can do to trade bigger. One of them was to do a daily report card on where he could be bigger in his trades, specifically what you did right here. Specifically what you did right here. Your executions. Going back and looking at where you could have executed better, exactly the moment where you could have executed bigger, and go, going over that. And then I suggested, hey, why don't you do that with another guy on your team? That'd be even better. And so 
uh, he was he was working on that. But but the the genesis of how people say I want to trade bigger, and then people say, well, here are some things you can do to trade bigger. But but the really the key is to get better at your executions, and and the way you get better at it, at your executions is you go back from when you are young, like you are now, and you start to study how you can execute better. And so, you know, some people will go back and they'll look at the tape at those inflection moments and see the nuance in the tape to see if they can improve their tape reading skills to be able to catch those turns better. It's just one way that people do it. But that is, you know, for all those people that want to trade bigger and they want to trade with more risk, there's work that goes into that. And it's the silent time when nobody's watching, where you go back and you do the work, where you're, you're looking at those executions. Like, this is the moment where I could have been bigger. This is the moment where I could have put on more risk for my system and, and, and to think through that. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that is how you're gonna be more consistent as a trader right there. That's how you're going, that's the work you're going to do to trade bigger. So very well done. Thank you. I haven't seen that yet from any of the other guys, by the way. Uh, so this is a little bit of extra I like to put in, uh, pattern recognition. Um, so this is also the same pattern that I noticed on Roku uh, a couple weeks prior. Um, so I traded this on a, yeah, there it is, July 5th. Um, this also just as a, this might be a little bit of an outlier, but also happened to uh, play out on a Friday. Um, so this is Netflix and Roku kind of side by side. Um, they both have similar statistics, both uh, market stocks, both have similar um, ways they trade. Um, this is something I'm kind of developing, but this is just something I wanted to throw into the end, um, just noticing a little bit of a pattern um, with some of these names. As Roku did have something similar where that breakout point was a, a partnership with Apple, and then the second day was the sell-off where Kathy uh, Woods uh, did a rebalancing where she sold off a lot of her Roku and then the third day which was the trend continuation to the downside. But that was just something else I just wanted to add in for a little note. Hey go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community and please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.